Hey, what's up everybody? So today we're over here at our Heller HF5500. And if you look at the machine, you may notice it looks a little bit different since the last time you saw it. And that's because we have our RSP12 hooked up now and we have 14 total pallets in this machine. So next time Titan does a video here, he's gonna start teaching you guys why automation is so awesome. But before he can do that, we have to put some work holding in this machine. So today we're gonna to get set up with our Vero S pallet and our new KSX 5-axis vices. So for starters, we have a six station Vero S module pallet here. Now I love these things and a lot of people don't really put enough thought into their work holding when they first tool up a machine. Now this six station Vero S pallet is gonna be the foundation upon which all of our later work holding is gonna be built on. And that's important because we really want a super quick change system here that has high accuracy and high repeatability. And that's exactly what we have here. Anytime we have to take a vise on or off or we wanna put a bunch of smaller vices or if we just wanna mount our pull studs directly to our stock, we'll have that versatility on each pallet. All right, so this thing's super easy to use. All you need is an air gun. They actually make a little fitting to do this, but an air gun works just as good. So as soon as we put air into this fitting, you'll see that our little fingers there unclamp. And as soon as we pull the air gun away, it clamps itself back down. Yes, clamping action. Now let's take a look at our KSX vise here. Now this thing is absolutely the best five axis vise on the market. Now you take a look at it and it looks a lot different from most normal vices. You got these two towers here, you got the spindle way up high, the spindle's totally encapsulating the worm screw, and there's numbers on the side here, there's these two bolts. What is all this stuff and what's so great about this vise? Well, first of all, you can adjust these towers to be wherever you want on the rail system. So that's super cool. You can look at your numbers here and make sure that you get your vise exactly centered if you want. Something else that I think is really cool is that you have your vise handle here and this should be the only tool that you need for this vise so this fits not only in the spindle for opening and closing your vise but it'll also work with our little actuation bolts down here so you'll notice that on our actuation bolts we have one that has these letters s and p and one that doesn't the one that doesn't is our fixed jaw the one that does has two different positions. S and P, the S is for standard clamping, so for your raw workpiece, and the P is for precision clamping for when you're doing your second sides. Now, if we take a look at what happens if we lock this bolt down, now our jaws don't slide around on the rail anymore, so now our fixed jaw is fixed. If we are in our standard clamping mode, what you'll see is that the floating jaw now can move forward and backward on the rails, just like a normal vise. But what's super cool is once we go to our precision clamping, now you'll notice that only this little section of the jaw moves forward and backward instead of the whole tower. I mentioned earlier how the spindle is totally encapsulated by this piece of steel here. And that's gonna keep all the chips and debris from getting on your worm screw and potentially damaging it in the future. Second, these things are built with internal dampening. So you're gonna get a lot less vibration out of this vise than you would from a competitor's product. There's also a pull down mechanism underneath these jaws here that's gonna make sure that your part is being pulled down into your vise instead of being lifted up like with most five axis centric vices. Now something else to point out is if you're clamping your raw stock, you want to be in the standard clamping position here. And the reason is you're gonna get a lot better holding force moving the whole jaw than you are just with moving this little precision jaw. So make sure that you're using it the way that it was intended. Now another super cool feature about this vise is that all the jaws that are available are all quick change. So you know normally with a normal jaw you're gonna have at least two bolts that you have to at the very least loosen in order to switch your jaws out. But not with these. These things are super fast, super cool, and super solid. Like once you put this jaw on there there's absolutely no movement in it when you try to move it by hand. So that said, tell me if you've ever seen a person install six jaws as fast as I'm about to right now. Ready? Boom, done. Now you may be thinking, you know, yeah, they went on pretty easy, but how hard are they to get back off? You just take your screwdriver, put it in the nice little slot there. Boom, it's back off. Super easy, I love this design. 
And again, you get no motion when you try moving this jaw around. I feel absolutely nothing clicking around there. It's a super tight, super solid fit. All right, so next up, it's time to clean our table. Now, this is the best machinist stone on the market. Now, how many times have you guys like Googled machinist stone and you get like 800 million results of all kinds of stuff you don't even know what it is? Well, we didn't like that either. So working hand in hand with Tyrolit, we came up with this bad boy. We got two layers on this thing and they're both made out of a medium hard vitrified bond, the silicone carbide. On this side, we have our rough side for aggressive material removal. So that's like the berry side of the stone and that's 120 grit. Then on this side, we have a nice smooth stone. And you know, this is kind of more like the Trevor side here. And that's 320 grit. Now normally a good precision ground flat stone like this is gonna run you like 150 bucks. But right now, these are on our store for less than $60. Get it soon because it's gonna go up to 90 and we're not making anything on this stone. We just wanted to bring you guys out there the best that Machina Stones had to offer and this is it. Again, when you're building up fixtures like this, cleanliness is next to godliness because this is the foundation that we're gonna build all of this other work holding on. Yeah, squeaky clean. Donnie, get over here. This thing's not gonna lift itself. Okay. <laughs> Ain't no pallet dope as me. I'm just so fresh and so fresh and so clean, clean. <laughs> oh yeah. There you go. Gosh, I love it when the holes in my fixture line up with the holes in my table. Boom. You've got pallet. All right, so now that we got our Vero S pallet installed, it's time to get our pull studs installed on our KSX vices. Now, it's one thing about this shunk stuff. You know something is high quality when it's heavy, and these are high quality. All right, final step, throwing our vices onto our Vero S pallet. All right, so like I said, you can either use your air gun or you can use this nifty little fitting here. And this fitting is the way to go because it's gonna go over our little fitting on our pallet and it's gonna lock on there, keeping all the pistons in the unlocked position. Let's go, Donald. <laughs> Yes, vice installation complete. Lock her down. And there we go, we got a tooled up machine. Yes, five axis vices of greatness. Shout out to you, Ichiban Engineering. I hope I said that right. Thanks so much for becoming a member and helping us to support free education. And for the rest of you guys, you can click that join button and become a member and you'll get access to cool perks like free merchandise, badges, and access to hang out with us on our Discord server. Check that out. Now that is work holding greatness. The very next step is we're gonna go over there and we're gonna saw a piece of material and then Titan's gonna do a video showing you guys some sick stuff. So I hope you guys liked today's video. Please like and subscribe and stick around because we're gonna keep showing you guys how to effectively fixture your machines and how to automate your processes. Thanks and I'll see you guys again next time.